Now we're live. G'day everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Battleforge Gaming Podcast. I'm Background Mike, and as always, I'm joined by BFG Justin. The tech wizard, man. I just I just ended the stream real quick, but we're back, so yeah. it's all good. The power. The power that he holds. Yeah, way too much power. I shouldn't be pushing these buttons all the time, but here we are. <laughs> and here today, we, are. we have our special guest, Saber Studio. Hey. As well as a little... Hello. Otherwise known as Lockie. There's a little fluff ball. And we've got a, a wild Zeta running around. I think she has selected you yeah, as nah, the... She's moved on. All right, cool. I get that a lot. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. If you can remember to like, uh, subscribe and comment, that would massively help the show. That's um, on YouTube, FYI, not on Twitch. Yeah. What do they do on Twitch? Just subscribe. No, they just jump in follow, chat and say g'day. And follow and subscribe. Yeah, follow. Sub. You got Prime subs. You can do that stuff for free. Yeah, if you're just, Amazon Prime member. Yeah, just link your account and, and sub for free. That'd be sick. Absolutely. And then on Spotify, if you're listening later. Um, do whatever you do us, on that. Throw us a review. Comment on any of the Q&As. Yep. Love chatting to people about what they're doing. Get in so. contact with Joe Rogan and have a chat to us. Yeah. Dana White. They're, they're the same, oh, same yeah. sort of dudes. Yeah, that? <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, as as per usual, we're going to start off with what everyone's been up to for the last couple of weeks because I don't work with Justin anymore, so I actually don't know. So, Justin, what have you been up to? You would be absolutely amazed. I've been painting... No, actually, I was going to say I've been painting Blood Angels, and I have, but I also did a little bit of a passion project. I did a little bit of a passion project, and I painted a Tau stealth suit. Yeah, so I... Did a little bit of a passion project and I painted a stealth suit for Tau and it was because I finished my 10-man Stern Guard squad, which if, if anyone's painted like a 10-man squad to box art, they'll sort of understand it's a lot of work. So I thought I'd just treat myself. But yeah, Tau, Blood Angels, sort of the usual getting stuff ready for our eventual battle reports, which we did a battle report yesterday, our first ever filmed battle report. Yeah. And, yeah. and it went pretty good. I think it went pretty good. We've got some stuff we need to work on. We need to look at getting some more cameras, some different angles, like a top-down view, some close-ups, but that is all stuff we knew we needed anyway. So I think it's very, very promising. Absolutely, yeah. It went pretty smooth. I think yesterday was a big tw uh, test for the lapel mics. We hadn't really played around with them at all. Yeah. And then trying to figure out, if the camera that we currently had was going to be okay for the main view, we know we've got a lot of stuff to add, like all the overlays for people to see what secondaries people are using and all that type of thing. But that we already knew that going into it, I think. Um, and then, yeah, getting some additional cameras for like a bird's eye view and then a close up of the models. So when we're doing the battle reports with everyone's amazingly painted models, we can kind of be that showcase out and be that point of difference to some yeah. of the other battle reports to kind of just show you like generic photos or they don't really show you what the models that they've got on the table look like. So yeah. Thumbnail, thumbnails often using games workshops own art for their, yeah. For, to display their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which if, if they're like, that's their, that's their style. That's their, they want to do that. But I mean, Justin, obviously, and you're, you're the same. You came up through the school of Justin, like you kind of know the painting is such a massive part of it. So the, the effort that, Everyone that is involved with BFG or related to BFG or close to BFG put into their models is just amazing. So that's why we want to show it off. Like we want to do close-ups of everyone's work because there's hours and hours and hours put into these armies and it'd be a shame not to be able to show everyone how much work's involved. But yeah, that, that battle report is up on Twitch as well uh, under the videos section, I think, of the channel. So if people do want to go check that out, it is on there. Uh, if people want to put feedback on there, awesome. We might throw it up on YouTube as well for people to take a look at. Yeah. Um, for those that follow us on, on YouTube. Um, but yeah, overly, overall, it went really well, I think. That's pretty good. Pretty smooth. Rolled a lot of ones. <laughs> there were some occasions where I rolled very, very oh, BFG the Justin. The there, there was one well. where it was like eight rolls and it was ones and twos. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. was pretty bad, but... Um, it was, it, was a, it was a good game. It was close. It's what you want from a game like that. Like the there was idea, like one VP in it at, 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 at some at yeah, round most four. Points. Yeah. yeah. So it was very, very good. That's what we've – Mark and I have been doing a lot of practice games 
as you would know, Mark's been coming over a lot. And it's more been us trying to balance the lists to get them closer and closer so that we can have more exciting games. And they're not going to be overly technical games. They're going to be very simple games, but we still want them to be exciting. We don't want it to be a blowout. Don't want just like Nids or Blood Angels being completely removed from the board uh, because that's just not fun to watch. Yeah, it's just like when you first walk into a Games Workshop store, but you're doing it at DreamHack. And instead of walking past, I suppose, the glass window, you're just walking past the BFG banner and going, oh, what's that? Yep. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And fingers crossed we can get a, a bunch of new people interested in the hobby. Oh, yeah. I reckon. That's how, well, that's how everyone really starts the hobby. They just walk past and go, oh, what's that? So, How, how good would it be to get, like, in a few years' time, you have someone come on the show and be like, oh, how'd you get into the hobby? Well, I was actually at DreamHack one year and I walked past... Imagine if we continue to do this for years to, to come and they're like a little kid and then they turn up and they're like, I remember seeing these guys at an, an event. They don't remember exactly what it was, but they remember seeing these people doing some battle reports. Oh, I saw this podcast and these three dudes are wearing this weird bunny, bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bunny ear guys got us into the hobby. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, DreamHack's still going ahead. We got a ton of planning still to do for that, I think. That's yeah. what... A month away, just under a month away, so 26th to 28th of April in Melbourne, which is nice. I think we're going to be launching some limited limited edition merch on our on our merch store, which will be DreamHack geared, orientated. Yeah, kind of a little bit little bit of a show, like a, a, a fun one-off piece that we can do for DreamHack. Yeah, and it'll, pro- it'll be available probably coming up to DreamHack and a few weeks after, and then after that, it's gone. No more. No more. Yeah. Cool. Get it while it lasts. Yeah. Yep. yep. Absolutely. But yeah, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I think what's it? Rod Laver. I think's the venue. Rod Laver. We are in. Uh, we've, we've been told we are in the foyer of Rod Laver Arena. Inici- oh, yeah. Initially, they told us Center Court, <laughs> and then they're like, "Nah, we might back that off a little bit." Yeah. And that- then they were like, "The foyer." So when people come into Rod Labor, we're going to be in there. That's where we are situated. Yeah. I suppose that's good because you have so to walk through there. You too. have to walk through there to, to get into the main area. So <laughs> there's going to be a heap of people going in to see, I guess, all the video gamers and all that type of stuff. But um, you'll have to watch us first. Yeah, you've got to get past the tabletop games first. Yeah, and we're going to have like a whole heap of like undercover BFG is like ushering people towards us. Just going to jump in front of people and go, no one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, Lockie, how about yourself? What's the last two weeks look like for you with the hobby? Um, I've been painting. Can, can I interject yeah. before we go too far? Because I, I do this a lot. I apologize. <laughs> but we did do a giveaway. We did do a giveaway. We oh, did a giveaway did. today. And I, I don't know how far people get into the podcast. So I feel like the earlier we get this done. I know exactly how far they get in. About Prop- sixteen minutes. No, there you go. No, no. So we need to we need to get on it now. Yeah, we need to get on it now. So yes. So we did a we did a giveaway today, guys, uh, to celebrate General Games opening their new Epic store, which is a massive store in Chernside Park. Which was epic. Which was it, epic. it was actually epic. It yeah. was. It looks sick. It is looks very amazing. Cool. The line out the front. Yeah, I've never seen a line out the front of a hobby store. Yeah, if you want to see. Uh, what an o- opening of an awesome hobby store looks like. Go check out our social media. I've put up a video of the line in the, in my story when I pulled up to the store. It was crazy. I was I got a little bit nervous. I was like, man, I'm going to be cutting in front of all these people to go film a giveaway. <laughs> I don't know. You're, I don't know how they're going to feel about that. You're one of those people come out of a limo straight into the nightclub. Yeah, then. that's exactly. Yeah, <laughs> straight out of my 2001 Subaru Forester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was sick. It's so good to see the staff inside were pumped. Yeah, they were so excited. Dude, the, the job they did was just insane. The amount yeah. of time, like, because we did, I did the signage for them, and I was there Monday. I helped. You did help. You, you put some <laughs> some temporary stuff up a couple yeah. of weeks before, but Classic I put up stuff. I put up the main sign on Monday, and I was like, there is no way they're getting this stuff done. And came back Thursday and Friday, and they were closer and closer. And I was like, I can't believe. How yeah. much work they've done. So Glenn and the team there have put in massive hours oh, to get it crazy. to this. Like he was there yesterday, I think. Or I saw Ryan and Glenn in there at like 8.30, quarter to nine last night. Yeah. 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 Now they're super early this morning as well. Yeah. Oh. 
yeah. So, yeah, props to those guys for putting together an amazing store, an amazing opening day. And they gave us some boxes to give away yep. as well. So oh, that's yeah, we're talking about the giveaway. So we did the we did the video announcement live in the store right when it was opening. So we had people it was kind of cool. We had people coming through in the background while we're doing the giveaway announcement. Yeah. Um it was pretty low tech. We just had the spinning wheel on my phone. But the first winner of the Combat Patrol box and Night Quest store no Combat Patrol and Vanguard or Vanguard. Or Vanguard, box. yep. Sorry. Uh, was Dawn's Apothecary. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be in touch with you and uh, congratulations. Or you get can, in contact with us because obviously it is across yeah. YouTube. So it's going to be hard for us to find the people that won. But if they're on our socials, we will be putting multiple posts up, letting people know who won. Absolutely. So, so reach out so we can send you your stuff. Yeah, so you can pick your Combat Patrol and, or Vanguard box. Yep. And prize number two was the Night Quest Doris box. And that went to Joshua Donaldson. 7148. There we go. Rain Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, you're good with numbers. Yeah. Remembering numbers. Yeah, Joshua Donaldson numbers. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get to you get the Night Quest Taurus box. So that's it, a that's a sick model in itself. It's definitely not definitely not the um the pin code for his bank card either. Yeah. So if you ever find Joshua Donaldson's card, <laughs> do not try and take it to an ANZ account I'm, I'm and sure. put in 7148 because that's not his numbers. I'm sure those numbers aren't important. What's yeah. a Night Questorus? Is it that one? Night Questorus is this. Oh, the white one. These ones here, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. sick. Which is sick. That's an awesome prize. So we'll get that out to them ASAP. Uh, and thank you, everyone, that commented and liked episode 11 and episode 12. That was the, the challenge for the giveaway. And we had... Over 150 people yep. put in for that, which is amazing. So the fantastic thing about those giveaways is it's a way for us to give back to the community and it's a way for you guys to support us too. So liking and commenting doesn't ask for much and it helps our algorithm a little bit and we just love to give away boxes for the community. Absolutely. Because free models are really, really cool. The more you support general games, the more you support us, the more stuff we can give away. Simple. It's easy, simple. Now we can get on to Lockie. I'm, uh, I am apologize. apologize that I interrupted you. But I feel like we had to get it out of the way because that the 16-minute watch hour is important. Uh, I think so, yeah. we did a sound check before this show and he, he was practicing talking over the top of people and I think he, he got too good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stay quiet for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> no, so, yeah, how have you been, man? How have good the last way. two weeks been going? I've just been um, – man, I've been playing a lot, but – I've been painting um, a Repulsor Executioner. So I literally I've actually finished it this morning. Oh, nice. I varnished it before I had to run down to General Games. Oh, yeah, um, I forgot a cable. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, what else have we been painting? And this is Dark Angels, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Dark Angels still. And I think the next thing will be an Impulsor. And it's just because um, I'm running a iron, like an Iron Hands list kind of. Well, it's not Iron Hands, but no. it's a tank. It's yeah. just a tank list, so... Armored spearhead, Iron Storm, Iron Storm Iron spearhead. Storm. Yeah, Iron Storm spearhead. Sounds cool. Yeah, you've got three executions of the paint though, don't you? One's painted, but not to the scheme I want anymore. So I'm going to paint everything. But you, you have to. You're going to paint three of them though. Uh, I will eventually paint three. It'd be I think sick. Three, three would be cool. Two lancers and two gladiator reapers. See, this is the thing. I, I just I challenge anyone who says this edition isn't fantastic, because previous editions. You're playing Dark Angels. You could take these lists, but you wouldn't be getting all the bonuses that you get for taking them. You, yeah, wouldn't, exactly. you wouldn't have all the strats. So it's just, it's opened up, it's just opened up the ability for you as a Space Marine player to paint the list you want and take the list you want. Yeah. And yes, certain detachments are probably a bit more meta than others, but at the same time, you could, you could, if you're like, hey, I want to, I want to do the Raven, I want to do the Raven Wing for, for Dark Angels. There is a Raven Wing detachment in the book, I believe. Yeah, there, yeah, there is. But you could still do the White Scar detachment as well, and still get the benefit of all the mounted sort of stuff. The Thunderwolf Cav for Space Wolves can do the same thing. Yeah. So it is, it's really, really cool this edition. So this is with tenth edition, you can take whatever detachment you want for your faction. Yeah, within reason. So with the new Codex supplements, which Dark Angels are the only one for the Space Marines so far to get one, 
only Dark Angels can take those detachments. But any Space Marine chapter can take the vanilla Space Marine detachments. Yeah, I think there's gotcha. six generic, five, five or six generic. And they came in the the main codex. Yeah, yeah. one's like what yeah. is it called? The tome. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a codex. The the tome. Tome. It is a codex. You're tome. just thinking tome yesterday because the Bible. I yeah, picked yeah. up the rule book and I'm like, that's a weighty tome. That's a weighty tome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's like your ultramarine, and then there's like your imperial fist, your white scar. It's called say like the. The Iron Storm is called Iron Storm, but it has a picture of all Iron Hands. It's meant to be for Iron Hands. Yeah, yeah, it's meant to be for Iron Hands, but anyone can use it, which, you know, Justin yes. was right. You, you can make, like, why I like Dark Angels is because there's so much, I suppose, flexibility of what they can do. So I can just pretty much run anything I want. Yeah. I suppose anyone, anyone can, but I have, like, special chapter-specific units that help. So Yeah. But, yeah, I've been painting tanks... You get about 60, 70% way through and you kind of like, oh, it's a lot of edges. Um, but you just keep powering through and then, yeah, once you're done, you're like, yeah, that's it. Well, you, yeah, I saw it yesterday and it was looking Yeah, was it's looking all done now. Unreal, but surely yeah. that motivates you for the next one, does it yeah, not? Yeah, because I... Like, I, like you, you, you can picture three of those on the table all yeah, complete to that standard absolutely. and how amazing that would look. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that I... I did paint one and it was the first thing I was like, oh, look, I'll paint the Impulsor because Azrael and the Command Squad is fully painted. It'd be cool to have that fully painted, them jumping out. So that's why I've picked that next. But yeah, obviously it'll take time, but I'm obviously paint a little bit quicker than you, but I'm not doing 20,000 each highlight. Um, so I'm not crazy. I don't yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got games to play, right? Like- yeah, I got games to play. I've played... <laughs> Is is one uh, for chat if they're in. In the last four weeks, I've played thirty-seven games. So right, that seems fabricated. It's not. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. So I wonder. Was, I wonder who's topping that out there. Like that's that's up there. It was two weeks ago. It was twelve because I played a tournament Saturday. There's, and there's a very a good. Re- there's a very good reason why you're playing this many games. Yeah. There's a yeah. very good reason. There is. Yeah. Which we'll get into later. We'll get into later, but or, or now, no, we'll no, we'll good. Yeah, Would, is that a segue? Yeah, I think I think it's a good time to, because Lockie, you've basically your journey to catch people up is how did where did you come into the hobby? You came in as a gamer or a painter? I I started, I and I came in as a painter and was keen to learn to play the game because I painted and knew nothing about the game. And that's and if you watched, I suppose the last episode I was on, um, that's how I met Justin. He was, you know, was it episode five we did something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was five. Yeah, check but, back with one of our earlier episodes because yeah, that covers your whole origin story. Yeah, how I and, met Justin, and then and we do dive into your gaming a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then I was like, oh well, this game's pretty cool, and still obviously still paint, but um. You know, kept playing, kept learning, kept playing good players and it just kept evolving. And then, um, yeah, and then there was I kind of found like what they call like the competitive stuff, which it's called competitive, but it's just people stay the same. The, just the list changes. This is when you started playing local league and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, like, local league. I started a little league thing yeah, as well. And East East Melbourne Wargaming? East, yeah, the Emus. The Emus. 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 Um, and then, yeah, you know, just either just playing around the house, playing with Justin or whoever comes over. And I obviously play a bit more than your normal person. Um, I suppose just I only just have my girlfriend, so no, no kids or anything. But um, it just kept going. And Zeta. Then, and, yeah, well, Zeta, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you, I, I would say that you do play more than what the average Warhammer player plays. But yeah. that is because you are bridging out into the competitive scene, like more and more yeah. to, to the point where you are now part of. So, yeah. So I'm now a part of, for people that don't know in Australia, there's um, a thing called um, ATC, which is the Australian team championships. Yeah. And um, well, this year in the um, team championships, obviously we're in Victoria. I'll be for team Vic. Um, and it's in Victoria this year, which is pretty good. So you can obviously don't have to pay a lot of money for flights. Yeah. Um, so basically you're representing 
Victoria in Warhammer. Yeah. That's yeah. sick. So, Congrats, um, man. That's, yeah. that's which, awesome. Pretty cool. Which is, is the point I want to make. So if you are getting into, I guess, a more serious side of, of wargaming, because you still have fun. Like, yeah. there's no doubt about that. You wouldn't be doing, you wouldn't be doing competitive gaming if you didn't enjoy it. Like, there's there's no point. So, it is still a serious, more serious side of gaming. And in order to compete at that level, you need to play games to learn. Because you can read as many web articles, codexes. You can watch. You can watch a heap of battle reports. But until you start putting your models on the tabletop and playing with them against players of that caliber, you're not going to truly learn how to play the game. 100%. And one thing I've noticed is when you're watching um, these like finals of like big GTs and stuff and big tournaments and you see these players and you think, oh, that's an easy list to play. And it looks easy because the player is so good. He makes it look so easy and effortless. But when you're there... Stuff's going on, you know. You write ten things going on, you miss you miss stuff, and I suppose that's that's what makes the good players good. Just makes it look easy. So absolutely. Well, even we kind of picked up on that yesterday with our practice of the battle report. Like, there's so much going on. The guys are trying to communicate to me where they're up to and and things like that. Like, I think Mark missed a couple of opportunities where he could have. He finished his turn when he still had actions to do and things like that. Yeah. Like it's it's easy to miss or not activate certain yeah. you know rules and well, yeah. partic- particularly in the tournaments I play you're on a chess clock. Oh really? So, yeah, so you got an hour and a half each. So say if I'm moving or rolling a save or doing anything that is my army and I'm rolling the chess clock's on me and the minute you're what you call timed out you cannot do anything all you can do is just roll saves for what your opponent gives you. So No way. Yep. So a, a good example of the, the chess clock is multiple times yesterday there were instances where I think I had the two I had the two Marines left with the Carn effects and like Mark rolled it out. But if you're at a tournament and you've played multiple games, you know that it is highly, highly unlikely that that one can't effects is not going to remove those two intercessors. And if it's not going to affect what's happening in the game, you just, you pick those models up. Yeah. Or, or, is, or, is, yeah, or as the, it. or as the opponent, as the can't effects play, you're like, Hey, do you want me to roll this out? And sometimes I guess when people aren't great sports, they're like, yeah, roll it out. Yeah. But you know, for the entertainment of that battle report, I was like, yeah, roll that out. But if I was at, if I was at a tournament, I'd be like, I'll just take those two marines. You don't need to roll those attacks. So wasn't the same? Is, same isn't isn't same, the clock on the car, Isn't the clock on the Tyranid player? Yeah, it that? is. It is. It is. Yeah. But like, I guess it's being a good a good sport. Or the or the That's the Tyranid, the Tyranid player sh- should ask you, "Hey, do you want me to roll these attack these attacks out?" Yeah, they and then and do. then you and then you know what type of play you're versing too. Yeah. If they're like, "Yeah, roll it out," they usually do. Like, say if I've got like two units left and something you know big and scary, you know, comes and takes it out. And I might have a feel no pain where it's a little bit back and forward rolling dice to save their time for, you know, rolling, hit, wound, and my time. We'd, yeah, as we just said, we just both said, all right, I'll just pull, pull them off. We save. Do you, you know, get removed from the board? Remove them or from pull the them board. Off. <laughs> remove them from the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remove them from the board. And then, you know, we probably both save three, four, five minutes depending. So um, there's a little bit of that as well. Okay. And that goes right up to the, the ATC level. Yeah, the time is on you. Your time clock down, like, counts down as you're deploying. So if you arm and R, like, while wow. you're de- you deploying, you can waste 20 minutes. And that's where playing those multiple games helps out because you deployment then becomes almost a no-brainer. You know the multiple table layouts. Lockie does it all the time. He'll measure out table layouts and... He'll set his models up from the get-go and he'd be like, cool, this model is designed to be uh, a combat unit like your your war suits. Victor war suits. Victor yeah. war suits. And you're like, I'm going to set these up on the line if I get first turn. And then you measure it all out and you're like, cool, I can get a first turn charge and hit almost anything on the board I want. So it does come down to practice well, it's, and just absorbing it's that It's so funny because I was just thinking then that our battle report yesterday went for – 
bang on three hours. And I was like, oh, you guys are tracking all right. But then I'm realizing we didn't, we did a deployment prior to the stream. We also were playing a lower points game. So three hours is pushing an hour and a half a piece. But That's, you need to keep in mind, you have two people that should know what they're doing. Yeah. You have, you're not being educational. Yeah. So a lot of the time, it's not me being like, I fire my grenade launcher and now I fire my bolt rifles and yeah. now I do this. You play through it much, much quicker. Yeah. So like for an example with Justin's intercessor squad, I'll go, all right, bolt rifles. I'll go hit, wound, uh, two saves, AP1. And then they roll and then I'll go grenade launcher. Da, da. And it's just very quick, like keywords I say to him. And um, if they really don't know what my stuff does, I'll explain a bit more in depth. But pretty much everyone knows what everyone's army does. So it's just keywords, this, did, did, and it just, it's a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, which also brings into, you know, into play that you, you, you need to know your list. You need to know your rules really well. And you just need to always be on top of stuff because there's, on top of everyone that learns to play the game, they know how difficult it is, let alone you've got a clock counting you down and, and t- you know, 10, 20 other things going on at the same time. So, um, yeah, usually after a few games, you're a bit mentally, yeah. mentally cooked. But how, what's, the, what's the most games you've done in a row or like in, in like a day time in a row, space? Uh, it, was two, it was two weeks ago on the practice. It was, it was seven or eight games. Wow. Lot, so. Yeah. Is that that's a full day wiped out? Yeah, full day. Wow, full day. So what? What was the catalyst for you changing from the guy that enjoyed painting and then gaming a little bit? What was the actual catalyst for you to go? Oh, I'm going to start really looking into the higher end type of gaming. I think it was just me watching watching the streams and wanting which specific streams. So it's like a like a War Games Live. They he drives around and you know streams all competitive games around the world where it's. So there's a lot of the American tournaments. America he goes over to Europe for the WTC, the World Team Championships. Um, goes to London, Austria. So he does. He goes you know overseas, and I suppose I just thought, well, why not, you know get most out of the hobby? Why not? If you know part of that hobby is playing, I suppose competitive. But it is a part of it. And, um, you know, why not just go up against the best players in the world? So there you go. Do you think you're a naturally competitive person? Um, yes, I'm, I'm quite competitive. I'm better at taming it now. As a, as a kid, I was a bit, bit ferocious, you know, for playing sport in the backyard with my brother. Got a bit heated, <laughs> you know. Plus, I think that's plus, a little bit. I think that's a little bit of cricket bats getting thrown and all sorts. Of I think stuff. that's a little bit of uh, <laughs> the brotherly brotherly love because yeah. my brother and I were the same. We had some um, pretty serious yeah. punch ons. Yeah, how good. <laughs> I mean, you're you're. I would say you're. You can be a competitive person if you wanted to be as well. Mm, maybe, like you. You want your painting to be up there and considered the best. I think I think that's an as, that's an aspect of competitiveness. I don't think it's quite. Maybe you've just got a standard, though. I don't know, like competitive with yourself. I, maybe. I don't like. Yeah, maybe it's an inner competitiveness. Oh, I'd love to go to tournaments and win the best painted. Which is, again, that's a that's a different sort of competitiveness. I think because at the same time, winning a tournament is is based on percentages and, and win loss. Whereas winning a best painted is subjective to the judges that are selecting who wins the best painted. Yeah. It's, it's more like a, a bodybuilding comp where there can be a whole bunch of dudes that all are the same height, the same weight. But they've got a different uh, body structure, like where their, you know, their muscles are located. They might have longer biceps or different, yeah. like higher or lower lat inserts and stuff like that. And they'll just be like, oh, I prefer that guy's figure over that guy. Like they're, they're, they've done the same amount of work and the same body fat percentage and that would be the same as painting. There's the same amount of effort put in painting but there could be different styles and it's strictly down to a judge that is like, yeah, I like that one. There's always going to be personal preference and bias, I suppose, in, yeah. with painting. But yeah. And yeah, I'd love to go to a tournament and win Best Painted but if someone was there and they won Best Painted and they were 
clearly better painted than me, then I'll go over and shake their hand and say, well done, your army is amazing. What is if they're not? If they're not, then we've got an awesome platform to take photos and just shit can tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what? how do you go about becoming a state representative? Because I, to be honest... How much did you pay? <laughs> One hundred million dollars. Yeah, I didn't cost even, me like five thousand dollars. <laughs> I, I had no idea there was yeah. a pathway to state level representation and then potentially national representation. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it was like as similar to. It makes sense, but I don't know. I just I think it's so. It's like beer fest. You need to know the secret um, entry around the back alley, and then, yeah, and okay. then the, the knock. And then you find the the underground league of Warhammer. It's like Fight Club. It's just, <laughs> it's just in these dingy car parks. And then just <laughs> Justin steps in front of you. Watch my stream. <laughs> He's got his set up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, well, obviously, where you, you got to apply and you know write a a big big spiel. Of- Did you have to write a bio? A little bit. What? Let us know what your bio was about. Come on. We'll, we'll post um, it later. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> like word for that. word. Did you have to have a picture of yourself too? Was it no, like a no, resume? No, no, You didn't have to have a picture, but you just got to like say like what faction you play, how much experience you got, you know, maybe like what tournaments you've won or all that stuff. So they can be like, oh, okay, this guy, you know, he's won a few tournaments. He obviously, you know, knows, um, especially like with teams, because uh, it's team teams is a bit different to solo though. Very different, very different. I'll, so the state stuff is all teams. Yeah, eight eight person teams. Gotcha. So, um, and then you know, and then you obviously you meet up, have a few trial games they see, and then yeah, that's that's pretty much. Yeah, welcome to the team. Yeah, what or, up? or see you later. What up, player? Yeah, I'd, I'd be see you later. I'd never get a call up. But, <laughs> Oh, it's yeah, it's I, I enjoy it. You know, I've I've been practicing against some really good players, and you know, I suppose get my ass handed to me a bit, which you know it always is. I suppose when you when you take a step up, it's always people that have been in that that level, and I suppose. But it's learning. It, I guess it's learning to take losses, though. If you're the new guy on that scene, it's it's understanding that that's part of the gaming and how you learn and how you grow as a player. Not so much. I'm, um, you know, I'm. I don't want to play Mike because there's a there's a very high chance he'll beat me. Yeah. So I'm never going to play him. Yeah. That's not how you go <laughs> and improve call. as a smart call, mate. The day we throw dice is <laughs> I mean, going to be that's the an competitive awesome side day. coming out. It's going to be an awesome day. <laughs> after about, after I paint your ad mech. Yeah. It's going to be about two oh. young brothers punching on in the backyard again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, the the level. The gaming level from the grassroots stuff, the local club stuff, yeah. to the state stuff, what's the step up like? Is it is it pretty big? Um, yeah, well, it's, it, it is pretty big because it's pretty much if you make one, one or two mistakes, usually two is too much, but if you make one mistake, usually more times than not, you've lost a game. Right. So there's a guy I played, he um, played Grey Knights. I made... One, I was made, this the one that was live? One that was on stream. I made a mistake deploying and just purely from doing that, I lost the game. So. I was watching that and you rolled pretty bad, though. I rolled pretty bad, but can't always blame it on the dice. Um, I can. Yeah, yeah well, uh, yeah, in some instances you can if you... Because he keeps waiting his dice the wrong way. way. That's yeah. why. But um, Which way do I put him in the microwave? <laughs> <laughs> six is face... Yeah. <laughs> Six is face up because you, you melt them and then it goes it's, heavier. It's the put, opposite of whatever you've been doing. You've got to put the, your little <laughs> magnets in there. <laughs> That's why you bought heaps. Um, yeah, because you that was live streamed on YouTube. Risky Rollers yeah. put that up. Yeah. yeah. What venue was that? Because you showed um, me in the Coburg. Book. Coburg, northern suburbs of Melbourne. Not as good as General Games, but no. not bad. It's not bad. It sounded, not it sounded bad. pretty good. It sounded it, very good. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just... Um, it's usually guys have been playing the game. You know how you usually, oh, I came in the hobby, I dropped out, this and that. Um, more times than not, it's guys that have like, yeah, I've been playing competitive gaming since like fifth. Non-stop. Non-stop. So, yeah. you know, the guys know every little trick. You know, there's no like, 
I move this, I'm going to do this, like that, you know, they know you're going to do that. And it's this whole, um, it's just this whole step up of they're constantly countering you while you're countering them, but you're going to have to score at the same time. It really is just like 3D chess. It is literally 3D. It's like a big arm wrestle. And then, you know, it's the first person to make a mistake loses. Right. So, um, it's good fun. I like it. Has there been a big, like, a big change for your list since joining the state league? Well, or state team, obviously, rather? obviously it's what, what they call, like, it's everyone brings the meta stuff, which people we are not. We have to. There's no way you could bring off meta. You and, could. And perf- yeah, you'd be very skewed, but you would be doing very well against specific lists, not every list. Yeah. So... Not, um... So you're going to bring a full crew army? Yeah, God, no. Okay, so so, so you yeah. just answered the question. It is yeah. meta. It you is have meta. To, you so basically meta, have to play meta. Meta is a, a term where it's just the best stuff of that particular faction. So at the moment, I'm bringing an Iron Storm list, which is just a lot of tanks. With Wouldn't happen to have a few other things. Pulsar with two lots of um, Eliminators in it? And then Pulsar with... Two lots of eliminators. Yeah. Um, if I ever play on a stream or something, I'll I'll explain it. But there's a little bit of a. I've I'll... explained to people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you'll be playing on a stream very soon, hopefully. Yeah. Not yeah. with that. Not with that. No. <laughs> no. no I'll be, this is what I would have I'll, brought. I'll be dialing it back, having a bit of fun. And yeah. Just... If we if we yeah. really ramp the BFL up, which will be the second sort of BFL. If... I don't know if that's been mentioned much. Uh the BFL is something we're working on. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's all you get to know about it. But oh. no, hype. Like I believe it's a hype train you call that on Twitch, isn't it? Uh no, <laughs> hype train's when people sub and gift, but no one's doing it. Oh. No. Send, send some roses. <laughs> <laughs> That's TikTok. Oh, yeah. we, need, we need bits. But yeah, so, Give me them bits. Yeah. So if you played your your list is pretty dialed at the moment. Or? Um I'm still still changing each game that goes twenty Probably 60, 70 percent of the list is is in that little sort of tweaking it, tweaking it. There's a little bit of a ceiling where I can score, and I want to try and push that a bit higher. Um, but yeah, it's just playing a lot of games into different factions and trying to find that balance. Where the thing with teams compared to singles is everyone's list is different because. Everyone, a particular list skews into two to three, maybe four armies, very good into them and not good into others, which is obviously just the game in general. There's armies that are very good into something and horrible into others. Um, But with teams at this level, they tend to say, well, yes, but let's just skew harder into those lists. And then we know what you're probably going to score with those lists rather than if you're okay across everything, we want you to be really good at two to three. Yeah. You're trying to, you're trying to really focus in yeah. on, on the strengths Yeah, and then, you know, that may make you vulnerable against certain lists type yeah. of thing. Is and that- then this one thing with, um, with teams is, is what, what we call pairings. So let's just say, Victoria's matched up with Queensland or New South Wales, whatever. They, South, South Australia. South Australia. Tiny. Tiny. His head would hit the roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One team puts up a list. Um, let's just say whatever. Your uh, Dark Angels. My Dark Angels. And then, and, then, so, and they go, oh, do you know what? I reckon I can beat Dark Angels. Yep. And then, and then South Oz, Tiny's like, I got lucky. Give me lucky. Yeah. And then he goes, it, Tiny puts his black Templars up and then my gets, gets whooped. Puts his, puts his ad mech on. And then I I'm, uh, get to pick the table where light, medium or heavy terrain. And then I pick, let's just say I pick Tiny. Now, all the practice games I've played and I've practiced against the list he's actually bought. And I have thought, well, I can get this score. And then I tell the team captain, I'll probably get this score. 
This is your VP you're talking about? Yeah, so... It's not, it's not always about winning, is it? No, so... Sometimes it's about losing, but... Yeah, so say... So for people that don't WTC World Team Championships, it's a score-based system with a differential of five. So say you win by 50 points, you win by 20 and 0, and then 45, you win by 19 and 1. And then if you are within five points of each other, it's a draw. And then 10, it's a, um, what, it's a 8, 8, 12. So for every five points, it's actually a one point differential, if you, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah. So are you saying if the VP at the end of the game is greater than, what do you say, 50? Yep, you win by 20 and 0. 20 and 0. Say, That's the score that you leave that game with that goes into the, yeah. the championship. So say you win by 15 points, it's a 13-7. So you, the winner gets 13, the loser gets yeah. 7. So, okay, cool. So that's what um, the team the team stuff is. Now, you you do make matchups, and what I said about those matchups is that continues on until all eight players are matched and have a table. But you might match... So would... For this, Team Vic would put up their, like, a roster. They'd yep. be like, here's Lockie's Dark Angels. South Oz would pick who they want that to verse. Yep. Then South Oz would put, put a list up, and Vic would be like, all right, we want this to verse that. Yep. And that would just continue. And you put, yeah, you put two lists up, and then they pick, and it just keeps. So say then after um, I pick Tiny's Dark Angels, Mike's Admech is instantly put up. Yep. And then oh, I got you. Vic yeah, yeah. put two up, yeah. and then they pick, and then that one list goes to the next round that wasn't picked, and it keeps going. It can be a little bit confusing. Bad luck for whoever versus Mike's Admech. Yeah. So, Sheesh. All lone operative. <laughs> okay, where's, where's the model? <laughs> Sheesh, the box? Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> it's just a, just a bunch of sprues yeah. come out. <laughs> Stealth lone operative. It's a uh, modest one to hit because they're not even together. They're just... They're just Multiple parts. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but with this matchup stuff, the captain could put you with a really bad matchup where you might get twenty and zero. You lose by fifty points because it's really not a good matchup for you. But he'll say, just do what you can, and if you can get one or two points, that's massive for the team. Yeah, huge. Because Imagine that, being the that... lamb to the slaughter. The captain's like, "Yo, dude, you're gonna get smashed." But yeah, and that's. That's what makes Australia at the moment really good because people like, say, America will have, oh, this matchup is a 20-0, we're going to win it a lot. But Australia makes lists and practice to go, well, we can actually win that game 13-7. So America, say, send that matchup in thinking they're going to win 20-0. And then Australia comes in and smashes that. And then suddenly they go, uh-oh. We're yeah, now, we were counting we're now, on yeah, that. We're now down on points there. We're down on points here, here. And that's what makes um, Australia really good. Yeah, Love so, to all our American viewers out there. Yeah, cop that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I get what you're saying tactically is, like, if, if someone like, for example, South Australia has a tiny who's elite – and as a massive oh, threat. Elite. Ma- huge, biggest threat you've a ever seen. Massive threat. Gigantic threat. You would then send someone out that maybe doesn't have any great matchups anywhere else. Me, because yeah. I'm five six and he's six seven. And you're just it's like a horrible matchup. You're like, Justin, this is gonna suck, but anything you can do yep. is better because we're we're counting on all the other yep. guys for the yep. points. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And there's been times I've been asked to take one for the team before. Yeah. There's been read, you're just read into that whatever you want, copping it. <laughs> There's been times where guys have gone in and so yeah, meant to get smashed and then they end up winning and and then that's what makes Well that turns the whole tournament, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well that's just what makes the team system so so good. There's just the whole nother layer to the game with the matchups. It's not like singles where it's oh, okay, I play this person. You just want to win. Then, you just want to win, and then I play this person and this, and you got to bring like an like an all comers list because you could play absolutely anything. Where with teams, and the the Australian league, like you're saying, is like the dub the yeah ATC. Yeah, has got what Queensland's got the current the reigning LVO champion. Um, no, um, he's he won um, War Masters last year, and then he 
he's pretty much like one of the best players in the world. His name's Liam. Yeah. He's the Australian captain. There's a guy um, in Victoria, Matt Morisoli. He came, I think, second or third, I believe, in the LVO. Yeah. So, yeah, very good players. A lot of very good players. In yeah. Australia. So the state, the state scene would be elite. Like, it'd be some of the best players in the world. Well, Australia is one of the best countries in the world for Warhammer. So, yeah, pretty much the, the, the players you're going to be playing are probably... Yeah going to be the best players in the world because, you know, those players obviously are going to share their knowledge and stuff with their state and then they're going to bring that. And yeah. And then, you yeah, the, 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 the opposite states have to combat that somehow yeah, yeah. or try to be competitive. Yeah. So the level must be fantastic. It is good, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very good. Big step up. A lot of new stuff like you just don't think about with your list building and you get to know what what's what, what works and... It's a little, yeah, another layer to it. But do you find yourself changing models in and out any more regularly than you did at the um, club level? A little, a little bit. Obviously, that twenty and thirty percent I'm changing at the moment because I want to. There's a few guys in in the team that are just like, yeah, that's my list. I'm in. I'm locked in. It's um, it's mainly because the list I've got is we're trying to. We could just lock in a list and be like, that's it. But we're, we're trying to figure out how to... It kind of sits at a ceiling of like 13-7, 14-6 to win. And I'm trying to I'm trying to push it to like a, you know, a, you know the 14 and above. So um, it's obviously difficult because, you know, it's not, it's not really a, like a weird unknown army. Like everyone knows what Space Marines do. So... Um, everyone knows how to counter them and, you know, what to keep away from. So it's it's very yeah, much... Yeah, it'll be hard for you to bring surprises, really, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. no. Nah. Everyone knows exactly what everything... You, you know, you, people don't even, even ask what your toughness and strength and all that. Everyone just, just rolls because yeah. everyone knows what it is. So it does very much come down to, I suppose, the pilot and the general behind it trying to trying to get the most out of it because... Yeah, it's not like it's, uh, yeah, I suppose off, not like off meta, but a, not an all comers, the well known army where you can kind of get away with, oh, didn't realize it did that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, hidden, so. hidden strats or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah. Do you like, when's the next, when's your next tournament? Have you played a tournament yet? Oh, they're like, as part of Team Vic? Oh, they're like little, uh, what we call RTTs. It's just like practice days. I've got one on Monday. I'm going there. Probably that's that's there just, just Team Vic? You don't have any interstate players or anything um, like that? I think I think anyone's welcome, but um, it's just, yeah, it would just be... They're not going to travel for it? Probably not, no. no. Um, so I think anyone in Melbourne could come in and have a practice game, but I th- yeah, they'll probably get smashed. Yeah. Because it's not, it's like, it's not really like a... Oh yeah, you on you. I'll go easy on you. It's like, well, we're we're practicing for the for the tournament. Yeah. So well, this is yeah, this is different to what we've talked about. Where you know, trying this isn't well, noob, this is, well, I mean, smashes. It, it, it is it is about it is what we talk about the time and the place for it. Yeah. This is the time and the place to play that tournament list yeah. against those people. You want to go as hard as you can. Go to an RTT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to test yourself, but like Loggy said. These are the best players in the state playing. So trying to get better. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But like, but like, it could be a could be could be a play, good place to learn. Yeah. Very good place to learn. Like I'd be I'd be happy to you know have a first game and I have had many first games. Tiny's asking, is there an event in May? Oh, oh is the event in May? Yeah, is the event in May. in May? Yeah, it's the end of May. In, is that the is that the next big interstate? No, so, that's the actual like uh, Australian team championship tournament oh, in Coburg. Nice. So, oh, that's right. You said it's in Victoria this year. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's in Coburg this year. So, Gammon Arena. So I'll be there. Um, Maybe Battleforge game should go. Should, we probably should talk about talk to people about that. Do you yeah. know? Do you know? You know anyone? No. <laughs> he knows all of them now. I would. <laughs> team Vic, bro. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. But um. No, what I was saying, like, I, I enjoy just having first games with people. Yeah. I've done it a few times, so I'd, I enjoy just having a laugh, just playing a casual game. Yeah. But it's knowing to dial it down and where to play it. Yeah, it's a, and a lot of people, there is a lot of people that don't know how to <laughs> dial it down. Yeah. And 
and then, and then I suppose you know everyone everyone in that scene wants to win, but it you know everyone has I suppose a different attitude of you know I did my best and I got outplayed. There's never really oh that guy's too good, I'm not going to play him kind of attitude. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, there's been a lot of guys I've come up against and I think like, you know, they're really good players, but you know, I still think, oh, well, if he makes a mistake, I'll, you know, you got a chance. It's not like he knows any rules that I don't. It's just it's still, still the game, but I suppose it's just the attitude of the people and, you know, you're never going to learn just rocking up and knowing you're going to win by turn two. Are you, are you nervous at all going into the... ATC? No, nah, no, I'm not nervous. No, nah. I think I think it's just because you have all the practice, and I think you know I personally think I'm good enough. It's just, it's just whether you know it just depends if I. It's just up to me if I make mistakes or not. Yeah, but I'll be cheering for you, mate. I'm keen. Yeah, I'm keen no, to see it. There we go. I think it'll be yeah, it'll be big. There'll be a lot of people. There. One of one of the crew representing Victoria. One of the balls. That's pretty cool. Very cool. No, I can't travel uh, just down from the hallway to get there. I've got, no. got to drive about an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rough. <laughs> Actually, got to put in some effort. Yeah, I know. Just Someone just, had to. But now me. there's going to be some gaming tables down at General Games, so that's only ten minutes around the corner. Yeah, the local. You should see it. They're actually, pretty sick. I like. Them. Very cool. I'll have to get good? down there one day and roll some dice. Taint a, taint a board. Are they going to be too tall for you? <laughs> well, I've been down there. They are a metre tall, and I'm not much taller than a metre, so... Scissor lift. I will bring... I'll bring... Bring your EWP licence. <laughs> Cherry picker. I've always got the EWP <laughs> licence on me. But I don't need it, because it's not over 11 metres, so it'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, it'd be... I said to the guys at General Games, it's like, this is going to be awesome having this around the corner, like, just being able to come down. We can... It's such a nice space. We can film if we want to, like take photos. I was taking photos of Justin's models on the VIP night, like on the terrain that they had there and they're going to keep adding to the terrain. So it should be, it should be really sick. Really yeah. cool. I'm looking forward to it. When can you actually play a game today? Yeah. People down there People playing, sitting up. They, they would, they were down there setting up as soon as we were there. 12, 12 o'clock, 12.01. Yeah. I, think really? I, saw, I think I saw some people setting yeah. up some nights. Oh, yeah, I'm almost certain some guy was setting up. He didn't even look like he had an opponent and he was setting his stuff up on the table. I yeah. should have taken my uh, Iron Storm list down there. <laughs> give, give him a friendly welcome to church. Give, him, <laughs> give him a, fr- a friendly welcoming to. They'll never, they'll never turn up again. No. <laughs> yeah. No. But they'll be running tournaments. Like they've, they always run tournaments out of general game stores. Like they'll be doing monthly tournaments. I think for Warhammer. They've said they're going to have enough room for twenty tables. So all the card tables that they've got there, I think, are going to get. Moved and condensed, and then yeah, and then they've got, they've got set boards. Them, oh, they've got boards, got boards to right, yeah. go across them. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So they've got they've got a couple of purpose built tables, which keeps all the terrain. And they're the ones you said are too tall for. Those me. are the Thanks. those are the nice meter tall ones. And then and then I think the others are going to be converted with large boards to bridge like the the blow mold tables or whatever to make make enough space for the for the terrain. That's right. So yeah, so they'll be doing that on the regular. You might need to bring yeah, a mic sagging. up. It's yeah, sad. Just unwind that. Droopy. Too much uh, whiskey. Too much gravity. Was like a kilo mic on the end of a. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, that's exciting, man. I'm I'm pumped. They're, they're obviously going to like produce it and stream that somehow. Yeah, it'd be streamed, I think. Yeah, it probably should be. Yeah. It'd be streamed. That'd be so cool. Um, Imagine if they were streamed professionally by Battleforge Gaming sure. and our setups. Damn. Maybe hey, you could. You could hit them up. Could. Really crisp audio. We'll be smooth with it. We'll be smooth with it by then as well because I'll we'll be have done hugely Dreamhack. smooth. I'd be like, this guy's. I don't know what he's doing, but he's just moved a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> just, I, don't know, just hey, I, I know how it'll go. when I, when I was watching you play that guy, and how many how many dread knights did he have? He had the grandmaster. Four or, uh, four or five. I think it was five. I was like, I was looking at his list and what he had, and I'm like, this dude's over points. I was like, there's no way this. He's he's too many points. Obviously he wasn't, but what is this little dog doing? Couple she's laps. lost her mind. She's yeah, she thinks she's going for a walk. That's oh, why. Yeah. But um, 
you two stream is because you think, oh, Lockie will drive us in, so let's have a few because there's beer on tap there. So by the afternoon, I didn't even you, know two, that. I you two that. would be absolutely sorry. People would absolutely love sourced commentary from myself and background Mike. <laughs> Just to go run around and start ripping signs off the walls. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think I think what what's going to be super cool is that I've never really been exposed to the competitive gaming scene. Yeah. So it'd be really cool. I mean, if we go down, awesome. If we just watch it on the live stream, I imagine we'd go down. Surely we're going to go down and watch Lockie play. What what date? Like the twenty, the end, the end weekend of May. Mm. Whenever, whenever that is. Is it a? Is it like a multi day? Yeah, two day. Two days. Two days. Do you play the end of May? Do you play multiple opponents, or do you just play the one game? How does that work with the teams? Yeah, you only play Podcast. one opponent from that team yeah. from your matchup. And then there's like the differential scores and are all added together and obviously who has more wins. And then you move on to the next round. And I think there's four four rounds on the first day and three on the second. Yeah. I believe. And then there might be like a final after that. So it might be like eight total. Okay. Um but Do yeah. you have any idea who you matched up with yet or is that to be decided? No, that's just to be decided on the day. Yeah, okay. So who knows? Could be WA. Um, yeah. If you beat WA, for example, does are they out? Is that their tournament? No, nah, no, nah, they're not out. You keep playing is because if everyone has a loss, everyone loses once. Yeah, it shouldn't happen. But then it will come down to points because there will be obviously multiple states that lose. So yeah, you obviously just you know they're always someone that it. Does lose, but if you if you do, you just don't want to come last. Yeah, it's always been bragging rights. Is there a grand final type situation for um, it, or is it more just a tournament at the end of the day, whichever state has the most points? Yeah, is is deemed the champion. No, I think I believe it is set up that there will be just one one winner. Okay, it's like a first, second, third. So yeah, yeah, cool. Good bragging rights. Oh, absolutely. As long as we beat uh, New South Wales. Yeah, It'd be sweet. What's with New South Wales? That's just, just the rivals. Yeah. Okay. That's got to that's got to be Victoria's closest rival, surely. Yeah, oh, Tasmania. I mean, <laughs> they don't, even, they don't have a team, a do state. they? They only just got a footy team, so <laughs> they better just. Does quiet the Northern down. Territory have a team? Yeah, Northern Territory have a team. Yeah, oh, no, they're probably FIFO workers. <laughs> just, come, just, just coming back from the mines or something, Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, they're just they're just in all high vis while yeah, they're playing. They're just high vis, steel caps, red dust on them. Yeah. So you've got approximately what? Uh, two months is it? Yeah, about two months. Two months to prep. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. No, you got longer than that. Um, what? How do? You, how are you going to prep for that? Are you just going to continually tweak your list until you're like one hundred percent certain on it? Yeah, I think I think after this weekend I'll I'll have it locked in, and obviously there I think there's four four or five weeks before the actual tournament you gotta you gotta submit your list, um, so I gotta do that and then yeah once that happens I'll just will practice with particular matchups and lists that I'm not hundred percent over, which is be like you know maybe your Necrons or your Thousand Suns usually. In our area, armies you don't often see. Usually this area is just like Space Marines and NIDs and... That's what I paint. <laughs> <laughs> Throw your neck out. Oh, man. Well, there's there's immediate be... area. That's all you see. Yeah, yeah pretty much. So I can't wait for the Blood Angel Codex when it gets bandwagon. And then, yeah, cool. I'm going to be super unique then. You jump on the bandwagon. That's why. But um, <laughs> so your painting is very high standard. You obviously won't be able to achieve that across the board straight away for this tournament. Yeah. So you're just going to be painting your stuff to battle ready? Yeah. So obviously I'll, I'll get everything to battle ready. But, you know, when I say battle ready, I'll still have like all my gradient, my like darker green to brighter green on the armor. So it is, you know, a bit above battle ready. And then I'll go through and doing what I'm doing now and finishing stuff to my standard. So I'll finish the repulsor, which I've done and to the impulsor and usually, yeah, I'll paint pretty quick. So I should be able to get the impulsor 
maybe a Lancer and maybe one more thing painted. Um, I'm hoping. So it's not it's not exactly. But the paint standards for this comp are pretty low. They're pretty low. They're pretty. I was, was going to really say nice that, armies because yeah. they've been playing for so long. But yeah, you you do often see. Oh, this is a really good unit. I don't have it. I'm just gonna chuck three colors and a base on, and then that'll that'll get me through the tournament. But yeah, I'd obviously want to have you know be known to be a, a good player. And well, a, that's and a, that's and a good what I've, I've been pushing you every time. I'm like, hey, your painting is very very good. You're gonna be on the state scene. You're pushing for. There's another little announcement. You're gonna be pushing for. The international scene. Yep. I'm that, is, that is hopefully something you can do. It would be amazing to be able to promote fantastic painting and being a really, really good general as well. Yeah. So not just ticking like the one box, hey, this dude's a really good player. Tick a second box. Yeah. This guy's a fantastic painter too. Because I do watch like whenever I come in and see you painting. Yeah. There's oh, some questionable stuff. There's it's, some painful, painful stuff you have to look at Yeah. on those streams when you're watching those guys game. Yeah. And look, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot cam people's abilities when it comes to painting. And I, I, and I understand that when you're going to the higher level stuff, you need to be chopping and changing your lists. So you're rarely going to be painting to the standard that I paint my stuff to. It's a, it's a different, it's a different part of the hobby. Yeah. But sometimes I look at the stuff and I'm like, surely that person has not tried. Yeah, that, that's the only time I've seen. That's the only time you, I see you go, "What is that?" Like, if you can see someone's made an effort, you normally just don't say anything. You just watch the game. But if you see, you can tell someone's just, I suppose, taken zero care. That's when you go, "Like, come on, bro." Yeah. But yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, I want to have a nice looking army, and do well with it but yeah hopefully yeah travel travel overseas at the end of this year I, th- I think I think with the, the more that Warhammer is coming into the general public because we're starting to see it yeah we've said it a couple of times Henry Cavill's series is going to bring light to, to Warhammer as a hobby the new Warhammer game that's coming out Warhammer Space Marine 2 Whoa. again that is going to that is going to appeal to people that aren't necessarily Warhammer hobbyists. And anything that is based around Warhammer that can bring other people towards it essentially brings people into the hobby because they're like, I've heard people be like, oh, man, I didn't realize there was a tabletop game based on Dawn of War. And it's like, Mm. well, there's not. Dawn of War is based on a tabletop game. Yeah. So I think the competitive scene will get viewed more. I think all of the, 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 the battle report people will get viewed more. They're all the sort of channels that do battle reports will get viewed more. And in turn, I'm hoping that that raises the bar of the standard of what the hobby is. So like, you know, if, if, we're, wanting, if we're wanting it to become more mainstream and, and almost become a eSports, but with tabletop gaming. Yeah. So like tabletop gaming sports like really really supported then having extremely well painted armies only benefits that yeah i i think i've I've just always been under the philosophy and i've always said it just get everything out of the hobby the painting the gaming everything that comes with it or not you know i know everyone's different but i i personally think well you know warhammer's not cheap in australia so yeah i think that's a fantastic attitude like you said it yourself. What what made you want to go into like that next level of competitive gaming or gaming in general? You're just like it's just another aspect of the hobby that I can enjoy. Yeah. With the stuff I've already got, why wouldn't I do it? Yeah. And well, at the end of this year, I'm going to Las Vegas, so you know I get to go to America. And yeah. Play a bit of Warhammer and play a bit of roulette. Be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well yeah, could. Could take it anywhere. You know, you could be going to Belgium to play in the WTC, but it changes every few years. So could go to a different country and, and play. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's well, a great, yeah, it's a great philosophy to, to take out of it, to go get as much as you can out of the hobby, especially, yeah, especially if you know you're going to, or if you've tried the gaming aspect and you know you enjoy it. Like, do you, how, 
having played all this game, uh, all these games, do you find that you have? Did it take you a little while to warm up to the gaming side of it, or were you your first game? You're like, oh yeah, I can get around this. Well, I think well the first few games, I think I was playing one of the, one of the guys that um, has come over a few times, Ben, and he was a very good player. So the very few few times I first played, I just got absolutely smashed. Yeah. But I was like, oh, it's fun because it's like, well, clearly I was doing something wrong. I want to get better rather than just like, oh, I've lost. I hate this game. You know, kick it to the kick it to the wardrobe. Yeah, I'll and, just stick the painting. Yeah. But yeah, I like I. Obviously, when you paint something, you're like, oh, cool, I want to play a game with it, you know, and see it on the board. And I, I usually think that's what people's, you know, I suppose first thought is. And, yeah, and I was playing better and better players and thought, well, I want to get better like that. And it just kind of just kept going. Yeah. You know, all new stuff comes out, I want to paint it. And then, oh, yeah, cool, I've painted it, I want to play with it. And then it's just why, why it kept going. And then... Space Marine 2 will come out, and me and Justin uh, will be playing that for 12 hours a day. No. Yeah. I, can't, I, can't be doing I'm that. I'm going to be luring him in. No. I've got, yeah. I've got on no. the computer a couple of <laughs> Hey, you tried to do it with Helldivers. I didn't play a game. Helldivers, unreal. Corrupted. Yeah, so good. Uncorruptible. Just call me Dawn. Rogal Dawn. Yep, call me Rogal Dawn. Boring. You're boring. Yeah, Rogal Born. Boring. <laughs> Yo, uh, Rogel Yawn, that was the That's one. That's the one, yeah. Rogel, Rogel Yawn. yawn. Yeah. Uncorruptible, bro. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. When are you going to start playing a game? God forbid. I'm always watching. I'm just background forever, I think. I told him I was going to paint his army. Yeah. Yeah, actually? Yeah. He told, he told me that and I was like, why? <laughs> why? Because people want to see background Mike in the foreground rolling dice. I think the... I think background Mike is best in the background. I think that's how the name at came some about. Sta- at some stage, that's... I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do all the computer work, updating stuff and you can roll some dice, bro. Yeah. You're, already, you're already better at the computer stuff anyway. Me, me and Justin will do it. It would be too like the people are already say... he's trying to figure it out and you're like having an aneurysm. It's inside playing. the computer. <laughs> people are already saying yes. Yeah. See, but yeah, I think, I think the go, well, my pitch to Justin was he paints my secondary another army. Another army. Tau, whatever he wants to paint. Knights. Well, I need to paint two more. You want to paint knights? That's actually yeah, pretty well, good. Yeah, you need knights. I only need to move around seven models. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sounds right up my alley. That's about as much effort as I can put into that, I think. Turn it up. <laughs> Gonna need more from you. But no, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd be keen, I think. I'm watching, watching the battle report yesterday, I was like, oh, it looks pretty fun. Typical I mean, cool Kiwi. If it's not rugby, he's not interested. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see anyone tackle anyone. I was like, this is, this is a bit boring. Do the hacker. <laughs> Carnifex tackled a couple of my uh, intercessors. I wonder, I wonder if I got to the international level who I'd have to represent. I'd represent oh, New true. Zealand. True. Well, you got a citizenship for both, don't you? Nah. I mean, yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> nah, nah. Shit. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is... AFP's going to be Yeah, just get snatched out of the podcast. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I'm Kiwi citizen only. Uh, yeah. I could pass the test if I needed to. Here? Yeah. Nah. I, t- I, took a tra- I took a practice test. Did you? Uh, yeah. What's on the practice got... test? I can't remember. No, nah, it's like, what does the governor general do? You guys wouldn't even know. Nah. nah. Yeah, didn't think so. F all. <laughs> yeah, that's government? A, Nothing. That's, that's, an overpa- <laughs> that's an overpaid. Yeah. Get yeah. paid f- fat stacks. Yeah, to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Retire. Continue to get paid fat stacks. I actually yeah. wouldn't know. That test I'd fail. I yeah. Think, I, I, think I think most Australians would fail. Em was right next to me and she's like, I have no idea what half of that is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. She's basically It's like, what's French. on the coat of arms or something? <laughs> I know that one. Kangaroo and an emu. 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 Emus. <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, yeah, the battle report side of things would be pretty fun. We need... More players. That's yeah, well, we're trying to get you on, and you're doing everything not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we went through a list last night. We've got a good list. It's getting the 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 armies painted to the standard we want because yeah, like it seems like a high bar for a, to to reach, but that's what we want to portray. Like we want. I to, think there's four generals that would be ready to go pretty much straight away. Yeah. We've got there's, two of well, them here. Well, there's, there's always two seats in the Millennium Falcon of Dark Angels, so you can always just come sit next to me. <laughs> Chewbacca. Yeah. Yeah. You Han Solo. Well, I don't know. 
I was like, I'm probably big beer and hairy. You're so chewy. I'll be chewy. You're chewy. <laughs> <laughs> You're chewy. Yeah. You know what? Right. With a mustache. Perfect. The 80s mustache. Perfect. Two. Han would look hot with a mustache. Yeah, see? All right. There you go. Okay. Likes on my team. Right. Cool. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, basically we've got myself. You're, you wouldn't be too far away from... Because I think we're going to we're going to start with thirteen fifty. We want to start with yeah. I've got that. We want to start with an arc amount of points. It's paint, painted to like yeah. I got all my Terminators, the Lion, Azrael, Command. You're bringing board. the Lion in thirteen fifty? No, I'm not. But I'm saying I've got thirteen fifty. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we got yourself, me, Alex will be done, and his chaos are going to be exquisite, and then. Ash. Ash has got a bit of work to do. Yeah. So I know, that, I know that he'll be ready for ARC, but he said he won't be ready for the battle report straight away. But he's been putting in big effort. He's been doing a ton of work on his Ash. Yeah, he time. comes back to play a game and heaps is done. Yeah. So yeah. he's putting in, putting in effort. So that's, that's four. That's four. Ray? Ray? Yeah. Ray's, he'll be ready for ARC and his, his Ulthway are just going to be future so Future podcast guest. Future. There's a few, there's a few people I know that got some really nice painted. Yeah. Painted armies. a really nice, really nice Necron army. And I think that's, actually that's probably. Is. Actually, yeah, actually is. That's what we'll have to We're reach out. about Will. He's got, he's got Scarabs painted. That's no, it. Will, no, Will. You. <laughs> Where yeah. is Will? <laughs> um, he's painted Gargan, I think. He's painted Gargan. But yeah. In a cave, I haven't seen it. Maybe. I think that'll be once once we've got the format and the cameras and everything sorted for the battle reports. That'll be where we'll have to start reaching out to people, see who's local that has a, a really high high standard of yeah, painted needs to army. Be high. It's going to be that's, uh, yeah. That's people, part of the main. That's the main entry criteria. Don't, don't take offense. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, it's that's it's not not trying to like exclude people or anything like that. But the whole. Our point of difference with the battle reports is going to be the painting of the models. And we realized during the report yesterday, we need to find really unique ways to show them off. Quality Have, over quantity. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Quality over quantity. And that's going to be the fun part is people get to watch a game, but they also get to be immersed because the quality, the quality of the, the painting on the models is going to be so not just the models as well. We want the terrain to be really good as well. So, yeah, it was one thing we were discussing terrain. Sort of the one of the larger things that's sort of holding us back is our terrain. We've got tons of it, just haven't had it built or painted, and it's going to take. Such... My terrain looked alright on the stream. Probably What's that? Still zoomed out yesterday. What's that? My terrain looked alright on the. Yeah, we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing super close ups though. So. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah, two, the two colors. Going, going to take a long time. I was, I was hoping that I was going to be able to get Alex to. Potentially paint some terrain, but at the same time, I don't want to take away from him painting his armies. So we'll have to search alternate avenues for It'll that. It'll come a day, I suppose. Everyone's got the list done, and then you can just one day everyone just sits down and smashes out a bit of terrain. Hopefully, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, so I'm yeah, sure. but thinking about like approaching people to to paint terrain as well. If there's people that are willing to do that for the for the battle reports. For the greater good. For the greater good, yeah. But then yeah, you paint your knights. Yep. Or custodes. You're doing custodes though, bro. Yeah, but you Is you that can, still a thing? Yeah, I'll, I've got a warden painted up. It looks pretty sick. You can do custodes. It's just gold with a wash. Making it easy for me. Yeah, I am. <laughs> there you go. Emperor Mike. Emperor Mike with his custodes. Makes sense. It does oh, make oh. sense. <laughs> I'm off. I don't know. I saw that new custodes model. Nah, not. Ooh, don't yeah. get me started. <laughs> oh, no, go. No. Nah. Hot go. takes. Oh, hot takes. Yeah, Holy let's, do, shit. let's do some hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we're trying to get sponsored by Games Workshop. <laughs> hot takes. Holy shit. Sub assembly overrated. <laughs> <laughs> No. So what's uh what's next for you with the competitive side then? You've got the the tournament in May. What how do you, how are you, how do you proceed from being Team Vic to getting to Team Oz? Well, it's obviously going to be pretty like a good bit realistic. It'll be it'll be hard for me to come in, you know, fresh into the state stuff than to go straight into that. It's normally 
They don't necessarily think, oh, this person's the absolute best. They've won everything because they're just using a I bring the list, I win kind of thing. They're like, well, this player doesn't, you know, really have the strongest list but keeps putting up good scores or this guy's a really good team player and he's really good at learning and gets better. That's how you, you get on. And obviously, if you do a few years in the state stuff or, you know, just in general on in, in tournaments, it gets noticed. You usually just get you get asked up and... You know, there's obviously a bit of bit of money that's got to go out for for traveling overseas and all that. But yeah, I've I've no doubt I'll I'll be there one day. I've no doubt. So it'll be good. Go to the LVO, smash some Americans. It'll be good. So, you got something against Americans? No, no, just, <laughs> just, just twice now. Just, yeah. just Australia will do it better. That's Lockie all. does not represent any of our views. <laughs> I'll fly we, we love thousand kilometers. We absolutely you know love Aussies all of our American <laughs> listeners. <laughs> You're the best. You are if the best. If you turn up to LVO, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you yeah. better not go and lose to an American oh, now. No. Yeah. If I lose turn one. I will just, I'll get bombarded in chat. They'll be like, I'm, I'm actually versed Lockie at yeah, the LVO. 16 hours of flying, and I lose to round one. Yeah. <laughs> Straight on the flight back. <laughs> Nah, you still play out the rounds, but yeah. yeah. I think it'll be sick. It's like a thousand people. Yeah, so you're going to do the tournament in May. Have you got anything between May and the LVO? Um, I think there's just a little local team thing, but to be honest, like I've played so much games. You I'll got pro- ARC coming up. Oh, I got ARC. Yeah, ARC too. ARC, ARC and, yeah. yeah, when Dreamhack. So I've got that. That's that's Man, if only we could get Dan from ARC on our podcast. <laughs> It'd be so good. It'll happen. One day. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> did, oh, yeah, no, you were yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, but how do you think you could go at Ark? Oh, I, obviously not going to bring the list that I'm just going to bring a. Well, it's not designed to be that. No, no I'll, whatever I have fully painted and looking really nice is what I'll just bring. Which I'll bring my Terminators, but they're not they're not that great at not the Not what they were. Not what they were. No, no. Oh, they'll probably just take them in five-man squads and I've got my, like, converted Brutalis Redemptor Deathwing Dreadnought, which looks pretty cool. Yep. Yep. So I've got that. I'll just bring stuff that's painted. Looks nice. Um, I'd, I'd just prefer, to be honest, I'd prefer to actually, I think it's four or five games, maybe six. <laughs> I prefer to have six games with people that probably have only had one or two games of tenth, where I can show them how to play the game. Yeah, I think I think Ark itself is more about the experience. Yeah, and just the whole atmosphere, as opposed to going and I'm assuming there's going to be some people that are going to try and win, but yeah, I don't. To be honest, I don't really want to come across someone that has played a lot and knows everything, and it's kind of like trying to be competitive whatnot it's just because like i do it all the time anyway at two thousand points for practice i'd rather someone like oh, i don't really know the game i don't really know the rules that much do you know can you give me a hand and i go yeah sure and i know their army because i have to learn it and then i you know show them some tricks or oh you can actually do this with your own like oh that's sick oh cool and then you walk away and they've learned something from from the game because you know they might have kids or Whatever situation, they live in an area where they can't play a game and ARC is where they can, you know, they can be like, oh, play with that lucky guy. He taught me something I didn't even know or this little combo thing, which is pretty cool, um, is what, what I want to get out of it. Yeah, something, a different experience for what you've been doing the past few weeks and stuff like that. You don't, you kind of yeah. want to break from the, the uber competitive stuff and just come have up some here, fun. Yeah, yeah, it's all, bring it's some other it's people always up. good. Like the competitive is fun. Like I enjoy it a lot, but it's also, you know, I, I enjoy as much, you know, teaching people how to play the game because it was only what, two, two years ago or something. I was just starting Warhammer. So, you know, and those people, you know, that took the time that didn't have to, you know, show me how to play the game because they knew it. They didn't like roll their eyes or go, Oh, like, you know, yeah. So, you know, I'm always very conscious of you know, someone that's new to the game. I'm always willing and happy to happy to help them. Yeah, pay it forward. Yeah, pay it forward, exactly right. Absolutely. That's awesome. She's been a pest. <laughs> He's shocking. Someone says he isn't like that when he plays me, Justin. <laughs> Who's that? That's one of your friends. 
getting called out already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Depends if it's in if it's in the league. The league, the league has lent to the more competitive side. I think that's, but it, yeah, it it got there pretty quick. Well, some this is the thing I was saying to someone once. They're like, "I'm not competitive." I said, "I know you're not competitive." Oh, it's your bro. Oh, it's Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, there's no holding. If it's my brother, there yeah, no. We no were talking back. about that earlier. Yeah, there's no holding back with me, me and Ryan. It's just. You got to give him the full force. Yeah, you, yeah, full throttle. Yeah, there's no holding back when it's just brother v brother. Bit of bit of cheating doesn't bit hurt. Of cheating. It? Doesn't He's gone to the well. toilet. Yeah, 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 so it's just... yeah, I haven't moved yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's good. Ryan, Ryan enjoys is it? Ryan. Ryan plays a few games. Well, obviously, he's got a he's got a you know I suppose a, a young baby to look after, so he can't play as many games as me. But um, yeah. But yeah, with the league thing, what I was saying, um, you know, you might not be a competitive person, but if you bring a competitive, strong list, you're you're playing competitive. Yes. Yeah. Well, as a, as a person that you know you're in that scene, you can look at a list and you be like, I know what this does. You're like. This is a bit more of a serious list. Yeah. And quite often you'll hear people be like, I just bring my lists because they're fun. Mm. And you look at that list and you're like, yeah, you mean winning's fun. Or at the start of 10th when the Wraith Knight was absolutely broken, oh, I've been wanting to play the Wraith Knight for ages. I've been painting it for months. It's finally here. Well, I'm so glad that I'm no longer doing my Wraith host. And then, and then it's all of a sudden, oh, yeah, how convenient. And then the minute they get nerfed, oh, yeah, no, nah, I got sick of playing them. Oh, oh. so I should be doing my Wraith host then. Yeah, they're not, they're not that. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it then. Yeah. But I like stuff that's nothing, not. There's good. nothing wrong. Like, Warhammer's expensive. Why? If, of course, you're going to be like, oh, that's good. And usually the good stuff looks the best because GW want to sell the stuff. So why wouldn't you? Mm. <laughs> like, to an extent, why would you spend tens, hundreds, even thousands of hours painting, building, you know, working at your job to afford it just to get horrible stuff and you lose every time? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate, you bought a Land Raider. You're, special. You're sniffing. You're sniffing for competitive. you love Land it. Raiders and Centurion. <laughs> He's loving it. I bought the Land Raider before you came back saying, yo, Land Raiders are cranked. Damn good. There's a, there's a small part of me that's like, these battle reports is going to unleash nah, competitive nah, justice. Nah, I, 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 won't be, I won't be going for better. I'll be, I'll be com- explaining stuff. Like, I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting Maybe on there the and BFL. Explaining, explaining what I'm doing and how stuff works. So people go, oh, like, oh, that's cool. Rather than just like... I'm going to bring a list in the in the streams over in 30 minutes. Yeah, well, it's cool. It'll be cool because obviously we don't have a time limit on that stream. Like we're not trying to fit it into like a time block or anything. The goal is to teach. The goal yep. is to showcase Warhammer and people can follow along. They can learn. If they can learn from players like yourself, they know the rules inside and out. Like you said, you can – it'd be like you coaching someone up at ARC, but you're getting to do that for 100 yeah. people online. Like Absolutely. So yeah, thousands of people. It's going thousands, to be tens of millions of people. Yeah. Millions. Online. It's going to be millions. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I think like, it'll be great for me because I don't know the rules. So that's all right. Knights won't take you long or cost those. It's fine. Yeah. You just have to wait a month for me to paint two small knights, and then they got your list. Cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there, you go. Pre- there you go. Preceptor Mike. Yeah. Preceptor Mike. Mm. How's Mike? Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe you should have won the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't oh, even... I didn't win. I was spewing. Yeah. Oh, I think 149 <laughs> people are also spewing, but that's all right. We got some We got some good good interactions from that, and some people got some free models. So so who, who are the two winners again, Mike? Can you can you just tell us? Yeah, I can tell you everything bar the numbers, but I think Justin's got <laughs> me covered. Give, so. Can you give, I was just trying to get you <laughs> yeah. to the numbers. Yeah, so we got Dawn's, Dawn's Apothecary. Uh, yeah. And won, then? won the Combat Patrol and all Vanguard box of their choosing. Yeah. And then uh, Joshua Donaldson, something, something, something <laughs> numbers. <laughs> you forget too. 7148. <laughs> That's weird. That's crazy. That's weird. 
train set. The information that went out of his head to remember that is just like, it'll be signage standards or something like that. I don't know. It'll be like numbers in his head while he's sleeping. So it'll, be his, it'll be his bank pin number. Most of the stuff that gets forgotten now is old Pokemon knowledge. <laughs> it's what gets pushed it's out. Definitely not. Because you, you, I was going to say he quotes me yeah, Pokemon he, stuff he, all the time. Justin pokes his head in while I'm painting and says something Pokemon that looks like that, and I'm like, I played Pokemon growing up. I've forgotten that. I played There's Pokemon. No way. I played Pokemon growing up too, and I didn't play it the way he played it. He's Bear. got some. I was competitive. I was a competitive Pokemon player. Yeah. I, I should go I competitive Yu Gi Oh. Maybe we should just get the dual discs out. Hey, Beyblade's coming back. We saw that in general. Beyblade's games. coming back. I want that disc had full defense. Do you remember when McDonald's used to sell the Coca Cola Beyblades? No. Nah. And like the toys? Oh, that nah, went so hard. That. that was unreal. That was back in the day when the world was fun and not <laughs> OH&S. <laughs> <laughs> it's all things you yeah, can't. No you choking said, hazards anymore. I don't know we're going off topic. Do you remember those like plastic um, arena things and you used to like... That's oh, what you get, yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah, get yeah. now. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a starter set down yeah. at General Games oh, for Beyblade. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Should, we, should we go get some? Yeah, well, um, what, what is it? Rip it. Yeah, the, and you can get used to get a handle one or like a real small one. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was like a main, the main blade, Beyblade, whatever it was. Well, they're open till 8 o'clock tonight. Two. Beyblade Forged Gaming. <laughs> the next battle reports. That'd actually be pretty cool having a Battle Forged Beyblade. I don't, I don't think that we do not have time for that. No, <laughs> we, just like. We barely have time. Just sit for there, the... like, have like a little. Have a little I'm going to triple there. highlight a Beyblade. Yeah. No, just, just have one, which is mm-hmm. cool. Would be cool. Sure, Nina will love that when we set it up in the lounge room and start ripping Beyblade. <laughs> you, and, you and me squatting over the thing, screaming at it. <laughs> <laughs> Next door neighbors uh, are going to call the police because, well, the police are no, walking up anyway there, because yeah. they're looking for Mike with yeah. his citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> and the police are normally next door anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, That's a, that probably brings us to the end of the podcast. I, think. Say, I, don't yeah. know, I reckon we've I'm we're exhausted <laughs> the Warhammer <laughs> chat the, the and then the Beyblade chat comes out. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, the cops are coming, so you got to start running. That's so. it. Yeah, I'm on a time limit anyway. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much for Lockie uh, Saber Studio for joining us. Thank you for uh, traveling as far as you did, sir. Stop yeah. it. Was, um, Congratulations on representing Victoria. Yeah, Looking sweet. forward to seeing you. Smashing every other state. Mm. I get a jersey, so you'll be able to see when I got my name on the back. Oh, I've seen the Warhammer jerseys that get created for those events, and I despise them. I'd per- it's a bit. I hope they're so tacky. I, I, hope, I, just, I hope it's not tacky. Just po- like polo shirts are a nice tee. That yeah. whole sports, they're kind of esportsy, aren't they? They're yeah. esportsy, full digital prints, and yeah. it's just <clears throat> some are a bit no of a good. carry on. No good. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be playing for my team, Vic, eventually. <laughs> No, n- not really. Um, <laughs> who we got on the next podcast? <laughs> uh, episode Tattoo Dude 15. Tattoo Guy? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, tarantula Minis. Tarantula Minis. Tarantula Minis. Does miniatures and tattoos. He's going to be doing my full Warhammer sleeve at some stage. <laughs> Live on the Are show. Are you actually going to get a Warhammer sleeve? Yeah, I'm going to get a full Blood Angel sleeve. That's insane. So I need I think- my leg finished. I might, I might ask him. He's, yeah. He'll have some stories to tell because I think he – actually, I won't, I won't ruin it. Yeah, don't tell his story. But that, is in, his that is in two weeks' time. Yeah. Yes, our, that's our, how we do it. Yeah, yeah. our podcasts are fortnightly. Right, still people, fortnightly. People have been asking for weekly. They've yeah. been asked for weekly, but we want to keep the, the standards high. We yeah. could do it. We could do a podcast after night, just me and Justin, losing yeah. the plot. Play him. Play him. Nobody <laughs> needs to be watching that. <laughs> no one needs to watch that. <laughs> He's – He's just Gollum and dinosaur walking and all weird stuff. Yeah, he got Gollum out on. Oh, the, I heard the viewers, the viewers would have missed it. it, but prior Stop to this. Fat <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. But yeah, so that is the end of the stream, <laughs> episode 14. <laughs> uh, we'll be back in two weeks yeah. with special guest Tarantula Minis. I hope I've got that right. And uh, In the meantime, we'll keep you guys updated. On Twitch, <laughs> on Twitch, we will be doing some practice battle reports for DreamHack. So, oh, Han Solo and Chewbacca are on or what? <laughs> um, no, it'll probably just be me and Mark. But <laughs> oh. yeah, once we've got once we've got the system dialed, then we're going to bring in the chaos that is the Dark Angels, I think, and then we'll. we'll You're on my team. So the chaos that is our Dark Angels. Much. 
And then, uh, yeah, so we'll keep updating people on when we're going to do some more battle reports. The last one was a bit impromptu. We just threw that up there. It was, yeah. But it is on Twitch if people want to check it out. And uh, this will be on YouTube and the streaming services later. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Uh, thank you, BFG Justin. Thank you, Sabre Studio. Thank you, BFG Zeta. BFG Zeta. Background Zeta. And background M for making oh, yeah. sure thank our you, audio M. is okay. Oh, yeah. Can we get a... <laughs> Thanks. No, 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 nothing. Go on, shy. And uh, we'll see you all in two weeks' time. See you guys. See ya. Stay out of yourself.